Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to absolutely maximize your FPS in Warzone. Um, and to be honest, this isn't just limited to Warzone. Um, this will help to boost your frames on pretty much every game that you play. Okay, the first thing you want to do is come down to your settings. Uh, and then once you're in here, if you type in graphic settings, what you'll get on here is a list of all of the um, games installed on your PC. Um, now mine's kind of set up so it automatically puts them all in high performance. Um, but as you can see, I've got Modern Warfare on here, which also includes Warzone and Vanguard. So if your Modern Warfare isn't on this list, you just click on Browse, find where it's installed and add it to this list. And once you add it to the list, if you click on it and go to Options, you want to make sure that this is on high performance. So normally it defaults to power saving or let Windows decide, but make sure this is on high performance. The next thing you want to do is come down to the gaming tab here. Now firstly, click on game mode and make sure that game mode is turned on. Um, a lot of people on Windows 10 had game mode turned off because people were saying that it actually made the performance worse. Um, but on Windows 11, they made a lot of improvements to it and it's definitely worth having on. After you've enabled game mode, if you come onto the Xbox game bar, definitely have this turned off. Uh, game bar is just like another overlay that you really don't need. Um, and the more overlays you have on, the less frames you're going to get. The next thing to do is if you type in power and you'll see power, sleep and battery settings. All you would do here is click on this bit here where it says power mode and change your power mode to high performance. I won't let me click into it because it says power mode can't be set while the high performance power plan is used. Um, but yeah, just click on this. You'll have a few options. Just make sure you click on high performance. Okay, so another thing you can do is come down to personalization in settings. Uh, go to colors and you'll see transparency effects. Um, just turn those off. Um, all you'll really notice is that the, the uh, taskbar won't be transparent anymore. It'll just be like a solid color. Um, but it's just another unnecessary thing that you don't really need to have on. Okay, so these are my NVIDIA control panel settings. Um, this is probably one of the most important parts of the whole video. These are so, so important. Um, yet the control panel is always so overlooked. Um, so on this preview screen here, click on use the advanced 3D image settings. And then click on manage 3D settings. Now, I'll just slowly scroll through these, but I'd recommend copying these exactly. So yeah, I would strongly recommend taking a screenshot of these, um, because if you need to update the control panel or you have to delete it and reinstall it for whatever reason, these probably will reset. Um, so just take a screenshot or just refer back to this video. So I'll just go through these other options. I don't think they're really relevant to performance, but I'll just show you them anyway. Make sure you've got your resolution set to a native one, um, unless you want to play in something lower. Make sure you've got your refresh rate set to the highest available. And then I've got mine on NVIDIA color settings. Um, so yeah, make sure that's on highest, that's on 8, RGB, and make sure that's on full. These are probably not relevant, but um, you might just want to copy these anyway. So desktop size and position. Um, I covered this yesterday um, in the video I posted, um, but aspect ratio is probably the best one to use. It just means that when you're on a game, it will stretch out as much as it can to fit the screen without going over the aspect ratio of your screen. Because um, on full screen, it will always full screen it, but... If it's larger than the aspect ratio, then your game will just go blurry. Um, so yeah, just leave it on aspect ratio. And make sure um, scaling is on display. Because um, if you put it on the graphics card, then your graphics card will just be under more strain than it needs to be. So just leave that on display. Um, yeah, make sure you've got your resolution set and your refresh rate set. If you have a G-Sync monitor, then I'd recommend having this on. Um, just enable G-Sync. And I've got it enabled for windowed and full screen mode. I'm only using one monitor, so this part doesn't apply to me. Um, using the NVIDIA settings, again, not sure if they're relevant, but here they are. Make sure this is on full. And then again, NVIDIA settings on both of these, both up to 100. So you want to come to your GeForce Experience app, um, and when you're in here, all you want to do is come down to the in-game overlay and just turn this switch off, just disable it completely, um, and you'll probably save yourself 30 to 40 frames 
um, just from clicking this one button. Um, if you're someone who's not really interested in recording your gameplay for, for content, then there's no point you having the overlay on. Um, and if you don't use filters, then you definitely don't need to have it on. Um, for me personally, I'm always playing for content and I use filters, so I have to leave this on, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, you can save about 30 frames literally with a click of a button. The next thing you want to do is open your internet browser. Um, I'm using Edge, but if you use Chrome, then that's fine. I think they work in exactly the same way. So if you go to the dots in the top corner and go to settings, then click on system and performance. I think in Chrome, you have to click on the advanced tab and then you should get this. Um, but yeah, for Edge anyway, this is how mine's set up. So startup boost disabled, we don't really care about that. Um, continue running background extensions while Edge is closed, definitely have that off. And use Harbor Acceleration, have that off. Um, so all this means is when I click the X to close Edge, everything will close, rather than things still running in the background. Um, efficiency mode, I don't really care about that. Save resources with sleeping tabs, I'll have that on. And fade sleeping tabs, I've got that on. So just in case you forget to close Edge, um, at least then you'll save some resources. So here's something that people don't really talk about, and that is storage space. Um, and it does actually have a big impact on performance. Um, so as you can see, my SSD is running at about 50% capacity. My hard drive is probably more at about 60% capacity, although I might clear this down a little bit. Um, but yeah, the more clogged up your hard drive and SSD are, then the more sluggish your computer is going to feel, um, and you will probably lose frames because of this. So I'd recommend going in, just deleting any games that you don't play. Um, you might find loads of temp folders, which, which might be like 100 gig, so just get rid of those. Um, the easiest way to do this is with something called tree size. So I'll leave a link for this in the description. Um, but once you open tree size, and if you click on select directory, um, I'll just choose my SSD as an example, so it won't take too long to scan. I'll make sure we start this as, a, as an admin, by the way. And then what it will do is it will scan my SSD, and it will tell me exactly where my storage is going. Um, so yeah, let's say right here, Steam library, 79 gig. I'll click on this little drop down. And then it still says 79 gig for the Steam apps folder. So if I keep drilling down, then yeah, I've got two games in here which are adding up to 79 gig. Um, so if there's anything you don't need, then just delete it straight from tree size and yeah, just free up some space. So this is just something quick and easy that you can do in Task Manager. Um, and you'll probably see like a 10 to 20 frame difference in doing this. Um, so all you do is right click on the game, whether that be Warzone or whatever game it is you're playing. Um, it should automatically highlight the game when you right click. And then if you right click, set priority, and make sure this is set to high. Normally it will default to normal. Um, but when you set it to high, the game will just run so much better. Um, you will have to do this every time you load up the game, unfortunately, unless you set up a script to do it automatically. So just one more thing um, in Task Manager. If you go to Startup um, and click on Status, just filter it so the Enable ones are at the top. just makes it easier to see them. Um, so I've got my lively wallpaper enabled and my LG hub for my keyboard and mouse. So when I turn my computer on, these will automatically run. Um, but all these other apps, I don't need these to run when I turn my computer on. Um, so any of these apps that you don't really need to run, just change the disabled um, just to save some resources. So this is the last thing in Task Manager. If you go to Performance and then click on Open Resource Monitor, in here you'll have a breakdown of how your memory is being used. Um, and you'll see something called standby memory. Uh, this sometimes might go all the way up to like five or six, maybe even seven gig um, of memory, which isn't available for you to use. Um, and it will make your computer run a bit more sluggish. Um, so I actually have a task set up where this automatically clears it every five minutes. Normally, every time you restart your computer, your standby memory will be reset back to zero and it will build up again throughout the day. Um, it's quite complicated to set it up, so I'll leave a link to a video in the description. Um, the guy makes it really easy, and I would recommend doing it. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you before I go into my in-game settings is the Players folder. Um, so if you go to your Modern Warfare folder, um, within there you'll have a folder called Players. Um, and in there you'll see something called Advanced Options. Now, I've just got my folder pinned here, as well as the Vanguard one, just to make them easy to get to. Um, but if you click on Advanced Options... Now in here you'll see version 1, we're just going to leave that. We're only going to be paying attention to the memory scale and the work account. Now the memory scale, I've got mine set to 0.85. Um, this will take a lot of trial and error to get like the perfect number for you. Um, but for me the sweet spot is 0.85. 
So what I'd recommend doing is starting this off at 1.2. Take a note of what your frames tend to sit at. Um, just make a note of what they dip to and what they peak to. Um, and then just gradually work your way down until you kind of find that sweet spot. Your frames are like nice and high and consistent. Um, with regards to the work account, this needs to be set to half the amount of physical calls that your processor has, um, your CPU. So the way you would check this is you go to Task Manager, go to the Performance tab, then under CPU, um, you'll see something here, Calls. So I've got an 8-core processor. So for me, I need to halve this number and set my work account to 4. A lot of people say you need to set it to exactly what this number is, but that is incorrect. And people also say that you should set it to the logical core processor number. This logical number, just ignore that. So if you have a 6 core processor, you put that to 3. If you've got an 8, set it to 4, and so on. So moving on to my in-game settings, um, under the display tab, I've got um, display mode on full screen. I'd always recommend using full screen. Um, select your monitor and your graphics card. Put your refresh rate to the highest one available. Uh, I play in 1440p. Um, but obviously, if you have to drop this resolution down to 1080p, then you would gain a lot more frames. Um, but personally, I just like to play in 1440. we have got dynamic resolution off. Um, you could turn this on if you wanted to. Um, it kind of helps keep your frames consistent, but I've never used it. Aspect ratio automatic. We've got V-Sync disabled. Although, if you do start seeing these screen tears, then I would recommend turning this on. Uh, custom frame rate limit. We've got that to unlimited. Um, brightness 50, that's just optional. Um, NVIDIA highlights definitely have these turned off. Because um, every time that you level up or get a kill, it seems to record it. And it's just annoying. Um, so I'd have those off. And low latency mode, I've got this enabled. Um, although I would recommend sticking to just enabled. Because when I had boost on, every time I got in like a gunfight with quite a lot of players, my stream would start to look a bit laggy. Um... Whereas on enable, that doesn't happen. So yeah, just leave that on enabled. Then under the quality tab, um, FOV, that's up to you. I play on 120. Got my camera movement on 50, which is the least. So for the actual settings, so streaming quality, we've got that on low. Texture res, I've got that on normal. Um, there's honestly no reason to play on high because the game doesn't really look any different at all. Um, you might notice it's slightly on your weapon camos, um, but the rest of it, it literally looks exactly the same. But yeah, if you look down here, the difference in resources is massive. So yeah, just stick to normal. Texture filter, um, anastropic, you've got that on low. Particle quality, I have that on high. Because um, when you're shooting your gun, like your bullet tracer look really like big and fluffy when it's on low. Um, so when it's on high, it just makes your visibility a bit better. So I'd recommend just leaving that on high. Um, bullet impact and sprays, that's completely up to you. Tessellation disabled. Gore effects, again, completely up to you. On-demand texture streaming, definitely have this disabled. Um, it's just not worth it. Not only will you start lagging in-game, but you might even lose some frames. Um, filmic strength, we've got that on zero. Film grain, zero. Now, this setting here is an absolute life changer. So many people don't use DLSS, I just cannot figure out why um i used to use mine on quality um because it basically just replaces anti-aliasing because anti-aliasing really does eat up your frames um so it's like an alternative now quality was really good i got a big boost in frames i probably gained about 15 to 20 frames um but when i switched to balance i'm not joking i probably gained about 35 maybe even 40 frames it was a massive massive difference um so i definitely recommend trying this out Ultra performance and performance just make the game look horrible, um, but honestly, balanced is, is probably the way to go. Uh, depth of field disabled. Uh, motion blur, I got that all disabled. Shadow map resolution low, um, although I have heard rumours that having this on high will give you more frames, but I don't think that's true. I tried it out and I didn't actually notice any difference. Cache spot and sun shadows, have this on, um, it'll just help you um, save some frames. Particle lighting low, ray tracing, definitely have that off. Ambient occlusion disabled and SSR also disabled. Okay, so just lastly to wrap up this video, um, right now we're sitting at about 150 frames, which is really, really good. Um, considering at the moment I'm playing in 1440p and I have all of my NVIDIA filters on, um, 
and my specs. While they are decent, they're nothing too crazy. Um, I'll leave them in the description, um, but I've got a 2080 Super and an i7 10700K processor. So very kind of middle ground, but um, they're still decent. And we're still getting 150 frames, which is really good. Obviously, if I was to turn around and like, look at this wall, my frames will be a lot higher. Um, but I just want to show you how filters can affect your frames. So if I stand here, we should be back at about 150. Um, so if I turn my filters off, the game looks a lot darker. But as you can see, we've gone right up to 195 frames. So we've literally gained like 45, almost 50 frames just from turning the filters off. Um, and as you can see, I'm still recording my gameplay. So if you just turn your filters off and record, you'll get crazy, crazy frames. Um, and obviously if I then turn them back on, then yeah, immediately I've lost like 40 frames literally at the click of a button. So that's just completely up to you. Um, I personally just like to play with filters on. I'm actually happy to lose the 40 frames just because the game looks so much better. Um, if I was like, playing Caldera, I don't really post like Caldera content, so I'll probably turn my filters off. Um, but honestly, this is just completely up to you whether you have them on or not. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'm sorry that the video did drag on a bit. I did try to keep it as short and concise as possible. Um, There's just so much information to cram in, and I just wanted to make sure that I gave you everything. Um, but yeah, let me know if this has helped, um, and leave a comment below if there's anything that I missed or anything you'd recommend that I do, um, or if there's just any other type of video that you would like to see.